connected with. We are having we are having a topic on understanding the food. I said we have a guru in the field of nutrition joining us as our presenter in the person of Mrs. Faustina Mariba Tor. She's the deputy chief nutrition officer of the Ghana Health Service, and she's affectionately called So before I read a brief house all of us, as much as possible where you can meet yourself and ask questions after the presentation is over. Um, you can also drop your questions in the chat box as the presentation is on the way. We would also um, ask that you ask as many questions as possible. Feel free to write down your questions if you may not remember it at the end of the presentation. With that, I have the pleasure of reading out a brief intro on a presenter. Auntie Fosti, whose full name is Faustina, Madam Faustina Rimari Bato, works with the Ghana Health Service as the Regional Nutrition Officer of the Greater Accra Region. She is also the CEO of Foster Foods, and she is a part-time lecturer at the Wisconsin University College, where she teaches ESC lesson students nutrition and food science and she's a nutrition consultant as well. Proud to studying community nutrition, Mrs. Tor practices as a nurse at public hospitals in the Northern region with specialization in infant and maternal, sorry, let me take it, a few years of experience designing guidelines for nutritional deficiencies and health challenges with indigenous African foods. In addition to this expertise in nutrition and health, Antiposti is also the CEO of a successful food processing company, Four Steps Foods, which harnesses the power of indigenous superfoods. She's a philanthropist and an advocate. And as a philanthropist and an advocate, my works with vulnerable communities in Ghana. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, here we have a guru in the list with this topic. Antipasti, Anti if you're on the call, please. You have the platform. Welcome. Antipasti, are you on the call, please? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please take it yeah. away. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dede. Sorry. Um, my network is not very stable, so please kindly pardon me. I may have to switch networks when we have one and a half set challenges again. So good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's the... Okay, good. Um, it's a privilege to discuss the code with you today. I think time is already far spent, and with your permission, I'd like to take it from here. Is that okay, Dede? Please go ahead. Yes, please. Okay. Can you go ahead Thank and ask you. Thank you very much. So I'll sh share my slides. Okay, please, can you see my slides? Yes, yes. very clear. 
this at all. Okay, thank you very much. I, so this afternoon, we are going to discuss the law, that is the LI 1667. But uh, before then, I'd like to uh, take us through how it all started. So my presentation outline, uh, I'll be looking at the introduction, where we we'll look at the brief history, we'll look at the law itself and why the law. Then we'll look at the scope uh, of the law and we'll look at some definitions in the law so that when we come to discuss the regulations, it will be easier for all of us to understand. And for our purpose as professionals, I've inserted what it means by conflict of interest so that we can all discuss. We would also look at some of the mischiefs out there that um, the formula companies take advantage of to confuse us in trying to apply the law <clears throat> and to save these I mean, I mean, babies that the law is meant to protect. So basically, when you look at the um, formula, commercial formula, I'd like us to just go through to see how it all started. So early 19th century, and um, it was observed that there was some feed for infants. And this was made from uh, on, um, that was cow milk. And they realized that the children had a lot of problems uh, with indigestion and some of them had uh, dehydration compared to children that were breastfed. So in 1838, there was a German scientist, um, Simon. He looked at uh, using cow milk, but with a higher protein content and low carbohydrate. And he looked at the content of human milk and tried to come up with something similar. And some physicians at the time recommended that if infants were to take this formula, then they need to add water, some sugar, and then also some cream to the cow milk. So in 1865, there was this soup that was also the Justus von Lisbeck soup for infants. And that was also introduced in the market. And that one contained cow's milk, wheat, some malt flour, and potassium bicarbonate. And the formula was to be added to heated cow's milk. Now, this cost just one dollar at the time. So in 1870, Nestle devolved what we call the another infant formula. And that one was similar to the one that was $1. But that one contained malt, cow's milk, sugar, and some wheat flour. And with this one, you were just to dilute it with water only. It was very easy for caregivers. And the interesting thing is that it, it was convenient and also very cheap. Only a cent or half of a dollar. You know, so this made them gather a lot of sales across the world. People were, it was very convenient for them to use. They didn't need to put anything on fire. All they needed was just to add some, you know, water to it and they, it was easy to go. So in the early 20th century, there were a lot of concerns from people like me and you, professionals and other scientists in terms of the infant food what infants needed to eat. So from here, there were a lot of meetings, a lot of scientific work that were done to be able to prove that, I mean, to find out what is ideal for the infant to take and to make the best argument. So we have, um, from this, they realized that the best was human milk and there was the need to protect infants by coming up with a law that would be able to help all nations across the world to adapt, to be able to protect these infants from people who are just out there for you know marketing and also for their own 
uh, interest money. So the breastfeeding promotion regulation 2000, that's the LI 1667 in Ghana. It was adopted from the International Code of Marketing of Breast Substitutes. So the World Health Assembly of WHO adopted the International Health Policy Framework for breastfeeding promotion in 1981. If you see the history, um, I talked about up to 1970, but there's a lot more that we can read. So in 1981, the World Health Assembly with WHO, uh, the, uh, the World Health Assembly adopted what that was something that was already done in 1981. And they came up with the code, International Breastfeeding Code, and it was to ensure that all nations across the world protect, promote breastfeeding for infants. So for Ghana, ours was 2000. We adopted the law in 2000. And in our laws, we have it as the LI 1667. So the LI 1667 was um, actually publicly announced, you know, or made effect in accordance with section 47 of the then Food and Drug Law 1992. That's a PNDC law uh, 306D and came into effect 9th May 2000. However, there were some loopholes in the law and therefore the country decided to review it under the Public Health Act 2012. So as we speak currently, the law has been reviewed under the Public Health Act that was in 2012. So when you look at our regulation, there are about 16 of them, and we'll look at them individually. But before then, what was the main objective of this ally? The main objective was to protect and promote exclusive breastfeeding for six months of life and sustain breastfeeding after the six months period until the child is two years or more. And also the ally is to ensure the proper use of designated products when necessary. And all activities of infant food industries do not undermine exclusive breastfeeding. It's to ensure that they do not undermine exclusive breastfeeding. So when you look at some of these things, there've been a lot of discussions in the background. I just want to give us a little bit more, you know, insight into the international law. And you see that uh, when the international law came into being, there were some loopholes. So they have also, just like Ghana have reviewed our law in uh, 2012 under the Public Health Act, there've been some reviews of the international law. So in 19, so if you see what is in red, that was what was missing in the international uh, law of breastfeed, uh, breast milk substitute. And they have now provided guidelines on that as well. So this is from the World Health Assembly. So when you look at 1996, there wasn't a lot of guidance and uh, financial support to health professionals. So therefore there was a lot of conflict of interest by healthcare professionals because the lead persons or supervisors did not actually have a lot of guidance under the law. And that has been amended. Now, uh, in 2005, they also realized that uh, there was this issue of financial support and other incentives to programs to help care workers on infant and young child health in general. You know, it's not about professionals going or on course or you know uh, individuals, but they realized that in terms of our programs, there were some conflict of interest. So therefore the World Health Assembly amended it and, and ensured that all members uh, states scaled up their effort to monitor and enforce national uh, measures to avoid the conflict of interest. Um, and these, have been inserted in the international law. We'll talk more about it. Now we look at the scope. If you look at the scope of the law, it talks about infant formula. 
mm -hmm. products marketed or otherwise represented as suitable for infant feeding up toward six months. So any formula or products that have been marketed as suitable for babies up to six months. So um, you see in our market, there are some of the canned foods or could be cereal or packaged foods, and they put their four months plus. So it is under this scope. It means that the law is against that. Any product at all. We shouldn't put our mind to only infant formula. It says that any product that is uh, marketed or otherwise represented as suitable for infants up to six months. Some of the follow-up formula as well. Then we have feeding bottles, pacifiers, teeth. Also, it's under this law and there are guidance on it. And um, products that um, would fall under this law have to be designated by the minister. Now, talking about the international uh, law, in 2010, there they were some meetings and they looked at infant and young child feeding and there were a lot of concerns. So with these ones, they also came up with some guidance on infant and young child feeding. And we can look up, it is in the World Health Assembly, you can find it in WHO. I just want us, I want to share some of these facts with you. So they actually looked at protecting breastfeeding. They looked at preventing obesity and non-communicable diseases and how to promote a healthy diet. Um, and they looked at ages from six to 36 months. Um, they realized the initial laws, there were some conflict of interest around complementary foods. So they decided to come up with guidance too as well. Some people would usually say that it's talking about infant formula. Why are you interested in complementary food? International law, um, in terms of the breastfeeding code, there have been some amendments. And if you look at it, um, the guidance says that there should be no free or reduced price in terms of these complementary foods, no donations or equipment and all that to our self workers. We'll look at this in detail according to the Ghana law. Now, they also had to discuss and to guide member states as to how best to implement this law that we are talking about, including our law. And, and in conclusion, they looked at the fact that um, the, all governments, of course, should impose strong regulations and to ensure that the food industry does not violate citizens or human rights to adequate food and nutrition. It is recognized, however, that such efforts may be Face, they may face formidable resistance from a food industry seeking to protect its economic interest. Okay, and so they, they are entreating all member states to ensure that they should enforce the regulations. And they should know that in their bid to enforce the regulations, they may be under, there may be resistance from some of the um, companies that produce these um, formulas of food. Then they also stated that states must take all necessary appropriate and responsive and reasonable measures to prevent business enterprises from causing or contributing to abuses of children's rights. Such measures can uh, encompass the passing of the law. So even if you're a local company in Ghana and you're producing something that you want children to take, as a substitute of their food, children up to six months, then it means that we can enforce, Ghana as a country can enforce the law. Okay. So um, I think this is just, um, okay. So as we go through the Ghana law, I like us to familiarize ourselves with some definition so that as I mention it in the law, it will be familiar to you. We have breast milk substitute. This means any food that is marketed or otherwise represented as a partial or total replacement for breast milk, whether suitable for that purpose or not. I think I've explained that. Um, healthcare facility. It includes public or private healthcare institution, organization or practice engaged directly or indirectly in the provision of healthcare 
for healthcare education and daycare centers, nurses or other infant uh, facilities. Okay, so it means that it is not only um, the health facility we are talking about, we are talking about daycare centers, public places where you, you can have children um, that oh, you provide some services to these infants or facilities as well. So in the law, when you see healthcare centers, we shouldn't put our mind to only hospital clinics and all that. Now there's a mention of um, public places. Public places means a place to which the public have or are permitted to have access, whether on payment or otherwise. Okay. So I like to take us through the law. So at this moment, I'm wearing the hat of a lawyer, <laughs> nutritionist lawyer, if you may permit me. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you look at Regulation 1, Regulation 1 talks about the prohibition of sale and promotion of designated products. So as a lawyer, I read it as, no person shall A, sell, advertise, promote, or assist in the sale, advertisement, or promotion of a designated product in any healthcare facility. So remember our definition for healthcare facility. Or B, undertake or participate in any promotional practice in respect of a designated product in any public place. Two, for the purpose of paragraph B of sub, uh, sub regulation one, that promotional practice includes D, the distribution of any information or educational material on feeding of infant and young child feeding, except in accordance with 78. We'll look at these ones later. So for the summary of Regulation 1, it's talking about the fact that no one is allowed to advertise or sell formula or other designated products in health facilities including their care centers. We also looked at any other facilities that uh, provide services for infants. Okay. And it also means that nobody is allowed to advertise or promote formula or other designated pro products in public places. They can be sold, but not advertised. Okay. And this one includes distribution of educational materials. But when you look at seven and eight, it will talk about educational material. That's why it says for oh, the exception of seven and eight. Okay. So what do we see? I'm just, I just want us to look at some of the things that are being done against this regulation. And you see healthcare providers wearing clothes that have logos of these uh, formula companies advertising their products um, in the name of some logistics that we use. These are violations. Okay. And yeah. Sometimes it could be pens that they give to us. Sometimes in our facilities, we actually see the products. And these are real. This is Ghana. This is the last monitoring that was done. FDA Ghana Health Service. And these ones were seen and the appropriate actions were taken by FDA and Ghana Health Service because FDA have the power to arrest and we usually work with them. So these were also seen in some hospitals, in some of our hospitals. Okay, now let's go to regulation two. It talks about the exhibition of manufacture and expiry dates. It says that no person shall sell, distribute for sale, or exhibit for sale, or stock for sale, any designated products. And bearing in mind the definition of the designated products in our first slides, it says A, which does not have the date of manufacture and expiry on the label. B, 
which is not in its original container. Two, no person shall sell, distribute for sale, or exhibit for sale any designated product and the expiry date for which has expired. Okay, so um, what we see is about, I mean, Regulation 2 clearly is just talking about expiry date. Now let's go to Regulation 3. It says that uh, distribution of free and low cost designated products. No person shall distribute free or at no cost supplies or samples of any designated product to A, health personnel, B, healthcare facility. Two, no health personnel shall accept or give any other person a sample of a designated product. Three, no person shall without the prior written approval of the minister carry out professional evaluation, research, or activities of any other description at a healthcare facility in respect of a designated product. Okay, so the summary is saying that health uh, personnel, health facility are not allowed to receive free or low cost samples and health personnel cannot carry out trials without prior written permission from the minister. So on the field, during the last monitoring across the country, in one facility actually, this was donated, okay, in one of the meetings that actually being used. And this product was neither registered and also the use by date was expired, but health workers did not check that at all. So what we are seeing is real and the law have identified these things and know that we may in the bit of trying to help, it could be maybe even an infant that needs it, but the law says do not use unregistered and we are not supposed to use expired product. Now we look at regulation four. Prohibition of display of printed material or designated product in a healthcare facility. Okay, so um, it says that no person shall um, display or permit to be displayed in the healthcare facility or in any public place, printed material that bears the name, logo or trademark of any uh, um, other description of a designated product. So the ones that I showed earlier, you had seen that some health workers will wear the coat and all that. It may not be the name of the designated product, but it is just the logo of the company. And Regulation 4 clearly does not support that. Okay, yes. So, um, we go to Regulation 5. Regulation 5 talks about uh, prohibition of donation of equipment and material. No manufacturer or distributor of a designated product shall, pro shall directly or indirectly donate any equipment or material to a healthcare facility unless it is with the prior approval in written or in writing um, of the minister given after consultation with the board. So you're not supposed to take any designated, you know, products or the equipment from these people without any approval from the minister. And if you work with Ministry of Health or Ghana Health Service or even the private, remember the law also covers the private facility. It means that if they are donating these things, they need to come with um, information from so, the minister for you to be able to do that. Okay, now we go to two. It talks about no person shall donate or distribute within a health care facility equipment or material that bears the name, the logo, or any graphics, mm, trademark, or any other uh, description of a designated product. 
Okay, so um, this is clearly stated. We go to six, and regulation six talks about the provision of fellowship and sponsorship. And remember the current international Yeah, Jose, we, we, are, we, are, we are losing you. And then it can read and go back to normally or indirectly. The sound that we think. Yeah, um, no, Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we, we lost you uh, momentarily. So if you can uh, restate what you just said. Okay, so is it the regulation six or five? Hello, Prince. Yes, it's just Regulation 6. When Hello, you... Okay. Yes, you could start. Uh... Start 6, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Regulation 6 talks about the pro uh, provisions of fellowship yeah. and sponsorship. So it talks about the fact that no manufacturer or distributor of a designated product shall directly or indirectly A, provide a fellowship research grants or any other financial assistance to a health personnel or b sponsor the attendance of a health personnel at a conference seminar or any health related professional meeting without the approval of the minister given after consultation with the board two no manufacturer or distributor of a designated product shall for the purpose of promoting his business directly or indirectly, offer a gift in cash or in kind to a health personnel of a health care facility. Three, no health personnel shall accept a gift in cash or in kind from a manufacturer or distributor with a designated product for the purpose of promoting the use of the designated product. And I think that we need to also go back to the international law. This was clearly amended and it states what to do. And I think that we need to have more facts on that. So the summary of six basically says that manufacturers and distributors are not allowed to sponsor health personnel without prior permission of the Minister of Health. Manufacturers and distributors are not allowed to give gifts in cash or kind to health personnel and health personnel are not allowed to receive gifts in cash or kind from a manufacturer or a distributor of a designated product. Now, Regulation 7 talks about distribution of information and other materials. One, subject to other provisions of these regulations and Regulation 8, no person shall directly or indirectly produce educational material in other and any other material or distribute information that relates to feeding of infants or young children. Sub-regulation one of two says that um, when you look at it, it does not apply to where a manufacturer or distributor provides information about designated products or information, and it's re restricted to scientific or factual uh, information. And usually this is what they will say. They, they are inviting us for scientific or factual um, if, um, seminar on all that. If it is something that we need to know about their product, which is scientific or the, you know, it's very important as professionals or people that may recommend the formula to know, then that is being allowed. So the regulation too will not apply to that. And the minister in uh, writing may authorize a person and specify what kind of information the person should produce uh, in terms of um, feeding of infant and young children. So sometimes, depending on what material they need to produce, it is being sanctioned by the minister. And we can talk about the Nestle nutrition line, for example, is being allowed um, in our airways by the minister because it is educational. And they are supposed to just talk about the educational 
part of it, the scientific um, part of it, but not to use it to promote any designated product or otherwise. So no one is allowed, but however, there are people that are supposed to, that are monitoring their activities online, you know, I mean, throughout the airways to make sure that they do not violate the law. So that is the summary. No one is allowed to produce or distribute any material, but the minister can authorize that. And I talk about the Nestle Nutrition Line and sometimes Joy FM, they may come up with some um, information related to infant feeding and all that, but all that has to be, you know, permitted by the minister rating and it is being monitored by the ministry. Now, if you look at uh, um, regulation eight, it says that any information, educational material, or other materials, whether written, audio or visual, on infant feeding may uh, made available in the country by any person shall clearly explain the benefit and superiority of breastfeeding. However, how to, sorry, how to initiate and maintain breastfeeding, including uh, material on the nutrition and maternal nutrition and recommended duration of the breastfeeding, which is six months exclusive breastfeeding from birth and sustained breastfeeding after the six months period until the child is two years. And how and why the introduction of bottle feeding or any introduction of complementary feeding interferes with breastfeeding. It says, this regulation says that if there should be any um, um, mat educational material that you are going to put on all these designated products um, or that is going to be available on infant feeding, it should talk about the fact that breastfeeding is superior and the period that is recommended for it to be, the child to be breastfed. And also talk about the fact that if you don't do breastfeeding or you introduce other foods early, it may, uh, you know, it's not the best. So basically this, this is it. Now two of regulation eight says that it, it states why it is difficult to return to breastfeeding. That is the material should state that. Why it is difficult to uh, return to breastfeeding after a period of bottle feeding, even if limited to a few bottles per day. And the B talks about the fact that it should maintain correct and current information and shall not use any pictures or text that encourage bottle feeding or discourage breastfeeding. And it should be written in English for us. Um, English is a spoken language. Now we have a written as well. Now uh, we have D talking about the fact that um, it should not make any reference to uh, any, design, any sorry designated product or contain the name of a logo of any manufacturer or distributor of a designated product. So basically it outlines the content of the educational material that has to be produced and what they should put inside. And regulation nine, one, um, it talks about materials or information referred to in regulation seven, two and four, and includes subject of feeding infant with breast milk substitute through feeding bottle. And the material information shall clearly uh, be written and it should state the proper preparation and usage of the product, the appropriate financial cost to infants for six months. So actually they're supposed to state, if you are going to use this product and you are not breastfeeding, this is how much you are going to estimate how much you are going to spend. And still with other regulations, state that breast milk is superior. So it's, and state the health hazards that are associated if you still go ahead to use that product. Mm. And also states that it is recommended for infants to be fed with cup. Uh, in this case, cup and a spoon or the cup, not the feeding bottles. So with regulation now, it continues to say that um, when you look at regulation 724, it includes uh, subjects of feeding infants with complementary food. And it says you must also, the material must also include the hazards health hazard of introducing food, complementary food before six months. And the, um, that food complement can easily be prepared at home using local ingredients and whatever. So with all these, it's saying that materials, which talks about the use of breast milk substitute, should talk about endangered cost and correct preparations. And materials that talks about complementary food should also talk about the dangers of early introduction. 
of complementary foods. And Regulation 10 talks about labeling of designated products. It says that a manufacturer or distributor shall not offer for sale or sell a designated product if the container or label which is, uh, to it does not hey, have a clear um, and, you know, the writing is not very clear and it's not easy to read. And messages that breast milk is the best food for the infant and prevents other a diarrhea and other illness. If you are selling a designated product, the manufacturer is mandated to state that breast milk is superior. And um, also, if you feed infants on breast milk, you will prevent diarrhea and other diseases. It should clearly provide instructions for the proper preparation and use of the designated product. In addition to any other requirements in respect of a designated product, it should provide uh, in the regulation the label of the, uh, the designated product. They should not be what? Photographs, drawings, or other things that shows that maybe uh, in their past, some of them would have babies, they will have toys and all that, healthy babies and all that, or their logos, uh, in addition to their logos, it should not be. Now, if you present these two, it will be easy for people to know where the product is coming from. So in this case, if you are talking about Nestle, so they move from these ones and in the past, it was graphic presentation where the international laws assume they try to amend it and they have been changing their logos as well. Now, if you look at um, the preparation by law, they are supposed to show how the food is being prepared clearly. Clearly, so that anybody that uses it, the person uh, can be able to. If you look at, if you can read, the notice here, it says that breast milk is the best food for infants and prevents diarrhea and other diseases. Before you decide to use an infant formula, consult your health professionals for advice. So per what the law has said, they are being mandated to be able to do this. However, sometimes the fronts are very unfriendly and, and the beneficiaries may not actually look at it, but they are supposed to clearly state that, okay. Okay, so you see what we are trying to say is that this is what the law says. Uh, but some of them sometimes maybe because the manufacturers, their interest is about selling, they will put what their other, other things that would market their product very visible. It's very clear compared to what the law mandates them to do and over here too. So these are things that internationally in the bigger stage, they are being engaged to ensure that they make it better. It is not very clear, the preparation, okay? But these things have been changed over time. In the past, you see that they say no graphics, so they try to change, and they change over time. Now, um, as we speak, some of them, they have changed from this. It's not as we see now. We have Regulation 11 talking about labels on feeding bottles and the teeth. A label on a feeding bottle or package or container of a feeding bottle or teeth shall include a statement on the superiority of breast milk for feeding infants. A statement that feeding with a cup is safer than bottle feeding and instructions of proper cleaning and sterilization of feeding bottles. So this should also be clearly stated. Um, but some of them in the past, you see they have nothing on that, which is clear violation of the law. So when FDA goes around and their market survey, they a mandated they can seize all this in the market. Now, Regulation 12 talks about labels on condensed milk. A label on a, on a container of condensed milk shall have a clear and, um, warning that it shall not be used for infant feeding. Mm. So the brands that we have in Ghana, do we see that? So from now on, let's look at it. I think some of them do. So let's look at it. They are supposed to clearly show that this is not for infant feeding in India. Yes. Now, Regulation 14, health personnel to support breastfeeding. It talks about health personnel in any health facility shall support, protect, and encourage breastfeeding. 
what structures and strat uh, strategies do we have in place to educate and inform these health workers? I'm just asking all of us. Can we, some of us, ensure that we so we, we enforce these and also support and promote breastfeeding? Now we talk about Regulation 15, offenses and penalties. Um, this has been reviewed um, and actually uh, advocates people that are interested, professionals like you and I are still advocating for more reviews because there, there's some for people to pay, it's just uh, um, very small and it's not the best. So what I say is that any person who A, advertises to sell or promote any designated product contrary to regulation one, we commits an offense and is liable on a summary conviction to a fine not exceeding 5 million or Ghana CDs or to imprisonment of a 10 not exceeding 12 months or both. Okay, so basically this is the summary of the law and I would like us to now look at some of the conflicts of interest of the airline. Okay, so most of these, we usually see conflict of interest around five, six, seven, Okay, one and two as well. Okay, so um, if you look at the code, um, initially, before the amendment, before the World Health Assembly amended uh, the International Breastfeeding Code in relation to fellowships and research, people were violating a lot, and even now, some people. But it has been amended, and it is even clearly stated in the law that it should not be done. Okay. So I just here I'm just showing you that there was a loophole, but that has been amended. So and in our Ghana law, it is being clearly stated, and we are not supposed to. Okay. Um, all partners have to make sure that we work to be able to achieve the objectives of the law. But if you look at some of these ones, um. There are so many countries need to be able to um, work on the laws again. I know Ghana's law is on the table; it has been on the table for a long time, appealing to uh, paragraph and uh, to parliament to be able to. But um, we have to work with the other global strategies. Now, if you look at the conflict of interest in the global strategy of infant and young child feeding, paragraph thirty-five, it says that all partners should work together to achieve fully this strategy, aim and objectives, including by forming full, transparent, innovative alliance and partnership consistent with accepted principles for avoiding conflict of interest. These principles, not, you know, they are not really defined. And um, sometimes some of the companies do see the limitation. And if you look at their same recommendation, go to paragraph 44, they, are some statements that that may not comply with the international breastfeeding code. Okay. And we also have what we call the manufacturer's product uh, codex that may not align with that as well in terms of the preparation, the hygienic practices and all that. So there's still a lot of work. Um, there, it's not all the private sectors um, that's complying with this uh, commercial uh, formula companies. Some of them are actually working to ensure that we have a win-win situation and UNICEF is one of them. And some of the things that we can do is, for example, um, in the past, Ghana Health Service will work with Unilever. If you work with Unilever and you need some logistics and all that, we will not be talk talking about conflict of interest of the law. And we've done that, they've supported us a lot. So sometimes, there are other places that we may have to look at to be able to support us. Now, if we take conflict of interest, okay, we need to be aware of the potential conflict and how we are going to work around it as professionals. A conflict of interest is a set of conditions in which professional judgment concerning a primary interest, interest such as a patient's welfare or the validity uh, of research tends to be unduly influenced by a secondary interest, such as financial gain. Yes, okay. So in the past, health workers have been used to promote unhealthy 
uh, products. But per this law, they, they clearly state that we are not supposed to. So imagine a nurse carrying a cabinet, a, 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 maybe um, a drink that is having caffeine, or maybe a, a doctor uh, talking to somebody with a flyer and a meal container is there, or somebody is having a, a smoking. So in the past, there have been a lot, not only on infant formula. And I think that with Sigrid, the World Health Organization and other bodies have come a long way to make sure that they write a lot of warnings on it and also ensure that the manufacturers do the right thing. So it's still work in progress. We are not actually at war with them, but we want to make sure that um, they do the right thing. We have different types of um, commercial organizations that deal in this infant formulas. And sometimes they are very manipulative and we just have to be aware. Sponsorship by nature is, you know, it creates some conflict of interest, no matter what they come to tell you. And whether it takes in the in the form of a gift, either as meals or some help that they'll give you to do some conflict, it creates a sense of obligation and a need to reciprocate in a way. Okay, so the gift relationship does not influence, it does influence your attitude to the company or the manufacturer and it can lead so unconsciously, you may unwillingly uh, not want to speak in of them, okay? So what they, we experts sometimes are being called, uh, especially academic experts. Uh, they try to find manipulative ways to be able to work. And uh, so, and then we also look at this. I think I have another slide on that. They know that we as a health professionals, we, we have some needs, but we may not get them. The system may not allow us. But this big man we see over here needs results. The big man of the manufacturing company needs results, but has money sitting there. But the law prevents the big man from getting through to us. So they look, they look at things that we may need. And they try to pass that. So they cannot go directly to a health facility, but they target we individually as health workers and look at what we need. And they may try to come to us in that. Mm -hmm. So just to say that we have to be very, very um, careful and know the law very well. And in terms of the IYCES uh, protocol, infant and young child feeding, it states clearly what we need to do. And the fact that with this law, we need to safeguard it. We need to protect the clients that we work with and other. Mm. Sometimes uh, public health policy makers and practitioners and associations, they need to recognize the goals and duties. Mm. And then they need to ensure that there's no conflict of interest. You need your members to go on a conference. You don't have the money. You want to produce certificates and all that. So you have to be aware of the, the, um, the code as well so that you look at it your ethics and make sure that they are not. Now, there are some mysteries. You find that there are some systematic reviews, okay? That talks about um, parents or caregivers having challenges. For example, when you look at the Lancet 2023 series on breastfeeding, um, it some, talks about 50% um, of healthy infants, zero to three months, have at least one episode of representation per day. Okay. It's, and then some of them, the mean time for fusing or crying is about two hours. So, so what some of the manufacturers do is that they go for these facts. These are facts. There are studies that have been done. And the study is not linking this thing to anything breastfeeding. But they come up, they say, okay, so we have now produced a product. And this product, when the baby takes, the baby will not have any fusing. Okay, the baby will not have any regurgitation. This is a special formula to ensure, you know. So in a subtle way, they are trying to undermine breastfeeding, but nothing is being mentioned. Okay, so um, we we have to ensure that we we, we are aware of this and we don't um, violate. Now the code actually advocates that babies uh, be, they should be breastfed. And if babies are not breastfed, for whatever reason, it could be that their mother is dead, they maybe are on some cancer drugs and all that, they cannot 
breastfeed, they could also advocate that they should be fed safely on the best available nutritional alternative. So it's very clear on the labels, on the instructions they should put there on scientific facts and all that. Then breast milk substitute should not be available and should be available when needed, but not promoted. So we are not saying it shouldn't be available because it may be needed, but it shouldn't be promoted. So that is the message that we should have. I mean, we should all take note. So basically, this is it. There's something else that I was reading. I thought I had shared it. That if you look the Venus Study 2023 Lancet series, I wanted to reference it. That talks about how much uh, money, profits, this, some of these companies get in trying to lure us to market their products. And talk about the human cost. How much we are losing the children in terms of mortality, in terms of disease how much nations, families are losing these children, the cost. And you see that the cost to human, okay, our very existence, mm, our generation, our next generation is far, far higher than how much they are making in profit. So in conclusion, I'll say that all of us have a duty, a responsibility. We should focus all our energies and interests in trying to protect this law so that we can promote and protect breastfeeding. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, and over to Dudu. Thank you so much, Auntie Kosti. Please let's give her a virtual clap. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your expertise on the matter clearly came out in Sean. Um, when we are looking for experts in nutrition for our infants and now, our mother said, uh, we, we will look for. Thank you so much because you are always there to give us the best information you can get. Thank the you pleasure so much. Thank Auntie you for Kirsten. having me. Um, so it's time for. Thank you. Thank you. It's time for questions. I can see our, our chat uh, lighting up with very interesting questions. Please feel free to post your questions in the chat. If we have additional time after going through the questions in the chat, will you there will be time to just mute yourself and ask your question. Another let me just run this by you. Put in the attendance link. Um, so kindly go to the chat box and then you can fill in the attendance form. So there's a question here, and um, can you permit me to address you by your first names as well? So Frederick is asking that you throw more light on which article the lab puts with the corporate logo and in the shelf with the Cerillac branding on traveling. So um, you showed us a picture where there was a, a branded lab put with Nestle the name Nestle Mates, and he wants to find out, uh, no, he wants you to throw more light on the spectacle that the two pictures you showed in Contra Bank. So, as you can see, please over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Daddy. So, I think uh, if we look at Regulation 1 and 2, it talks about sale and advertisement of uh, breast milk substitutes. So um, in a health facility. So, um, and then we go to, I think Revelation 7 or so, talks about the logo. It may not be the product itself, but you are, it does, even the logo, you are not supposed to uh, show that. So I think that if you permit me, I can just go back briefly. I still have my slide also. So that, okay. So Auntie Fosti, as you are looking for it, there's a follow-up okay. statement by Fred. He said, I stand to be corrected, but um, Revelation 4 um, emphasizes um, Um, go ahead. Okay, I'll okay. So thank you. Okay. Please go okay. ahead. And so we have the regulation one. 
it talks about sale, advertisement, and promotion. Okay, of um, a designated product. So this is about the products, and it talks about it's not being done in a healthcare facility or public place. Now we talk about the logo. I go to the next information that is not the next. Okay. So the the logo is really treated in the printed material. I'm just showing it here. Okay, so regulation four, here we have it. No person shall display or permit to be displayed in a healthcare facility or any public place printed material that bears the name, logo, or trademark, or any other description as a designated product. So this clearly states it. I hope I've answered Frank's question. Thank you. Yeah, well, yes, um, Fred may um, redirect again, but I think his follow up was stating that um, it's it's the uh, it was talking more about the name of the product and not the company. I think that was what his follow up. Uh, so, but regulation but four clearly talks, talks about, about the company. Yes, the regulation four actually talks about the logo or the trademark or any description or well, any other description of a designated product. So the name, even if it's just the name, and it's Thank the you company so much. that is producing infant formula, it falls under the, yes. Thank you, over. Okay, thank you. Fred, I hope your answer, uh, your, sorry, your question has been answered. Thank you. Um, Wala is also asking, she says, uh, is there a conscious effort to engage the code violators? That is the manufacturing companies after the code monitoring exercise. Yes. Actually, individuals were engaged, facility heads were engaged. And for the health workers, some of the, the feedback was that they are ignorant of the law. So um, since last year, we have done a lot of trainings on infant and young child feeding. And we are sensitizing them on the law. In fact, DG wrote out a letter, and all the district directors, and regional directors, were sensitized on the law early this year. And I know for Ghana Health Service, down there was some down uh, orientation for all district directors, and we have been some downstream training for all staff. Uh, we are still ongoing to ensure that all our staff have the law, they have copies of the law, and they are aware. But sometimes staff attrition can find some gaps, but we are making call that is from the Ghana Health Service aspect. And in fact, I know that we are engaging some private facilities as well. So it is to all of us, wherever we find ourselves in our small corner, to try and ensure that people who work directly with infants uh, and mothers and other caregivers are given this information so that we'll be able to protect and promote breastfeeding. Over. Thank you. Thank you so much. Still in our chat box, Anthony is asking that what are the punishments for the violators of the, the codes? I know in the past, for my predecessors, some people were prevented from attending um, anything that has to, or doing anything that has to do with infant and young child feeding, directly giving uh, responsibilities around that. But I must admit that there've been some gaps and uh, there've been a lot of calls from uh, a lot of people with interest in infant and young child feeding to ensure that we amend our law to have 
much more severe sanctions and clearly uh, something that that is clearly stated for the middle level supervisors to to you know enforce so yes enforcement is weak but um it's, it's all our responsibility to ensure that we we help and i think that the best for me the day i will see ghana parliament attend to all what has there's been a lot of academic work i happen to the preview to belong to the national uh, breastfeeding committee for some number of years i think about three years or so and i know civil uh, society organizations academia ministries and all that have done a lot of work and we all we need our parliamentarians to amend the laws so i'm only hoping that these things are done thank you so gun it is a uh, we have a responsibility as gun to push as well <laughs> thank you over Thank you so much. I'm losing you. I can barely hear you. Please, can you can oh, yes, And then, hello, Dede. Sorry, am I clear now? No, no, I, I didn't. Yes, hear. can you hear me? Am I audible? No, yes. Okay, but now, okay, all right. Um, so um, Yao is asking what the procedure for seeking the approval of the minister is. And then there's a follow-up um, question as well. Whose duty is it to apply for this approval in Ghana? Is it the healthcare way? Okay, so usually it depends on the situation. If it has to do with, maybe you have a client okay, that needs it. Hello. Oh. Dede, please, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was losing you. Okay. So what I understand is the the person wants to know um what are the procedures to get permission from the minister and whose responsibility? Am I right? Yes. Stability okay. is it. So, yes. This is a no, healthcare so, way for the product of Okay, so I think this into, you know, so the first one is if it has to do directly with the designated product. So, for example, you have a client in your facility, you've lost the mother immediately after birth, family cannot afford or, you know, and then you need formula or they are, you have uh, challenges with mother's condition and you need formula. So what happens, you work with the social worker, the social welfare worker in your district or facilities. Some facilities have the social worker. So usually you work with the social worker and with reports from the facility, you give to the social worker and they send it forward to the Ministry of Health. They are usually people at the Ministry of Health responsible to ensure that it gets to the minister. And when you get the, the, the permission, it goes through the ranks. So depending on if it is Ghana Health Service, then back to the facility for the facility to um, communicate to the formula company to produce the, um, to get the designated product. I have done this. Uh, I mean, I would supported people to do this. That has to do with mothers that are dead, families that cannot afford. So you are appealing to the formula company to give to them. And they are supposed to pay the law, as you see, they are supposed to be able to give them for the whole six months, not one thing. So they are supposed to ensure that they provide six months. Now, it, if it has to do with the written material, it's the same. If it is Ghana Health Service, it means you are going to, if the facility wants to come up with a written material, you have to pass it through the rank and file of Ghana Health Service from the facility level to the district level, to the regional level, then it goes to the national level and then they take it to the minister. But if it has to do with academia and all that, they, I think you also have your rights and then you need to get the minister's approval. As I said, there are some directors at the ministry that are designated to this. And 
and the, and the right things will be done. So it depends on the situation. Yes. Okay, thank you. I hope your question has been answered here. Yeah. Uh, there's another question. So when professionals like ourselves, doctors, nutritionists, and dietitians, accept speaker rules for the named manufacturing companies um, to sponsor educational research dissemination events or CPD activities, do they need the Minister of Health's approval for that? If yes, does that make such engagements without approval evaluation of the law? So I think what my colleague is our colleague is asking is that sometimes you be called as a professional for educators and speedy activities. Yes, can you hear me, please? Yes, I lost you for a bit, but I can hear you now. Am I clear, please? Yes, you oh, are. Sorry, my, my apologies. I think my network is also <laughs> giving a few challenges. So please let me repeat that question. So when it's okay. professionals... I, I, get, I understand. So you got when it. When professionals are yes. engaged to these speeches, presentations... Yes, yes. Do they need a health approval for that? And if yes, does that make such engagements without approval? Uh, Yes. So, you know, when you look at the law, that is why there's a call, serious call for amendments and clarity. But if you Alicia clearly Lopez. look at... Yes. Uh, Dede, can I go on? Hello? Please go on. Please okay, I, thought that I think there was a problem. Yes, please, please continue. Okay, thank you. So that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of you know outcry for the amendments of the law. But if you look at the regulation one, for example, and if you are being asked to go, and usually when you go for these um, meetings, at the end of the day, they either promote their product or they say something about their product. So there's a it's a subtle way to get their things advertised. And if you look at one, it's saying that no person shall, you shouldn't advertise, you shouldn't promote. So indirectly, yes. Indirectly, yes. Yes. So we, there's outcry for the law to be simplified, to be clarified, and you know, so that we to middle level supervisors can actually take action. So indirectly, yes. Because at the end of it, they will definitely talk about their company. Even if they don't, there's a logo of their company, there's something about their company, you are going in the name. And as I took us through conflict of interest. It makes you to be obliged. You're not going to use that platform to talk about anything that is going to. So these are loopholes that these people look at them and they are in for profit and they know. Why don't they go to the market woman and go to the agroglossy market uh, onion seller and say, come and talk. Why you? Because you are coming from a health facility. Because you are coming from, maybe you are your private practice, people trust you. You are coming from a place where you handle children, mothers, and then you uh, you have a voice in terms of making sure that you you influence their feeling. So yes, as an individual, I would say yes, indirectly yes, the loss is yes. Okay. And I, I think his follow up question: If if yes, should we then seek the approval from the minister? Yes, and for us, I said seek approval, and you know. The approval that will not come from you, the letter of invitation should clearly come from the minister. And for example, if you are working in facility A, they don't bring, bring you a letter directly from the minister inviting you to go and give a symposium. It goes through the rank and file of the hierarchy in your institution. So for example, I'm in the region. If I should get such invitation, it should come from my regional director through the, all the rank and file. So through the minister, through the director general, through my regional director to me, that is when I will know that all permission has been sought and I can go. I don't receive any letter. So sometimes they bring a letter straight directly from the ministry. Maybe it is a new minister that has just come on board, not orientated, a new director that is not really orientated, direct.
Is I think your network went down a bit. Hello. Hello. It has to be just Antipasti. I think your your network is sure went off for a bit. Hello, everyone. Um, please, um, we'll take the opportunity to fill in that attendance sheet. Um, I already posted to wait for her to join. In the meantime, so you could kindly still put in your questions into the box. I can see some hands raised as well. So we'll work to get her back on the call. So let, let's see if that's possible in a few minutes. Thank you. Please have we um, posted the link for the attendance. Um, kindly follow it and then fill out the form so that we can register your attendance for the program. Thank you. Good ones. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon. Sorry, Dede, I'm on. Once again, um, we are still waiting in line. I'm going to proceed. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. sorry Welcome sorry. back. So, thank you. So, please, I was replying to the last okay. one. I said, uh, yes, I think that uh, indirectly, the law does, if you look at it as an individual from a facility or from wherever you are. So, for before you go for such um, presentation, I would uh, I recommend, or it is recommended that you get the permission from the minister from your rank and file, depending on where you work. So if it has to do with your institution, it should come from your immediate superior and it should pass through the rank and file. So for example, for some of us in the Second Health Service, it means that it needs to come from uh, 
the minister to the DG, to your regional director, if you're in a facility, to your district director, to your facility director, and to yourself. That is how the, the letter should come true. But also if you're a private individual, if you belong to any other institution, I think that you should have the right permission so that you just make sure you are not violating the law in that way. That is what I mean. Yes, today, over. Thank you. Over to you, Dede. Hello. Hello. Hello, this is Kula. Can I talk? Hello. I think, yes, I think so. Uh, like I've lost the day, so Ecola, yeah. please over. Yeah, so, so thank, thank you for the presentation. But over here, there was a registration list. I don't know whether they can post it back. The network has not been stable at my end. I don't know whether it can be posted back and then we can register. Is it possible? Hello, Dede. Yes. Oh, I think we have it was, it. was reposted. Yes. Yes. You have to check the chat and see, Ecola. I have, I just, my net has been off and on, so I just successfully Maybe joined. Are you on? Uh, I, I, I was there um, for some time and then went off. Okay, I've seen it now. Thank you. Okay, I think it's 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 it's, uh, it's been very uh, interesting. Um, I think before we come to those whose answer up, uh, they, they will take that. But then, uh, uh, so for see, um, this is from uh, is it uh, Dr. Hime. So, what can you say about the Nestle Foundation that supports a lot of nutrition research worldwide? Well, having the foundation as a founder. As a founder, be against the ally. Okay, Prince, thank you very much. I think that well, um, Nestle is a very big company globally, and I'm sure they are very much aware. My, 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 uh, some of our colleagues like Fred, who works in Nestle, I see his hand up. He knows the law. All of them are very much aware of the law, and I'm sure that at that level, they should know. But one thing I, I tell you is that you know. The not only Nestle, let's not only target Nestle, any, any company that is set up for profit looks up for profit. So as professionals, you need to also know what um, regulations and laws are there for you to protect the very people that you have been trained to take care of. So I cannot really speak for Nestle, but I think they are very much aware and they are trying to align to um, these laws globally. Yes, because it is not just a Ghana law, that is an international law, and, and, and there have been a lot of work over time, if you look at the changes in the space of infant and young child feeding. Yeah, okay. thank you, okay. over. Okay, thank mm. you. So, uh, good afternoon. Please, regarding Regulation 7B, can the health facilities be used uh, to provide information in a form of presentations, whether or not they have approval from the minister? It's a big... It's no, all right. Yes, all right. please. Yeah, yeah. then uh, I think there are a few more before we come to those who want to speak. Um, I think Fred said there's a difference. Oh, okay, let me restate it as a question. Oh no, he was he was stating it as, as, a, as fact. There is a difference between promotion, example, tie in sales, free samples, ETC, and recommendation. A health worker is baby is baby friendly when they are able to assist a mother who generally cannot breastfeed to use the right age appropriate infant formula. So I think I don't know whether it's a contribution or a question or uh, or a response. Yeah. To so maybe it's a maybe it's a contribution. Okay. All right. I take it as a contribution just to define what sure. the difference is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please. Said, somebody said, where do we put uh, gripe water in the food? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if you look at regulation, yeah, it talks about not, you see, there's one thing that we have to take note. It is not just infant formula. 
if I, you know, uh, give birth to my baby and my baby is two months and somebody is selling TZ and tells me that this TZ is for two months, it is a designated product. So when we go back to the um, ally, it says clearly to six months, up to six months. That is why the World Health Assembly have amended that to include complementary foods. Okay, so you see that it's talking about up to six months. So any product, it could be any product at all. In Ghana, you see the FDA go around sometimes, and I mean they see products like hence four months plus and all that in our law. We are not supposed to allow such things. It's saying up to up to six months. So it could be teased, it could be anything, it could be a clear, it could be anything. But if you are advertising it and you are selling it for children less than hmm, in that age, it becomes a designated product. So let's disabuse, let's not put our mind to only formula milk, milk, only baby, baby formula. No, 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 no. Yes. I think it's a very important Thank intervention you. there. Thank you. Did it? Please over. Thank you so much. Once again, my profound apologies. My network um, let me down a bit, but I hope you can hear me clearly now. Am I audible? Yes, we can. Yes, please. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. And so we'll go to um, our page and uh, participants who want to ask the questions in person. And if you want to do so, I think um, Fred has his hands up. Fred. You kindly go ahead. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much, Auntie Fosti, for making time for this session. It's been very insightful. Um, I The first point is that I wanted to clarify, a uh, quick clarification. You know, the question I asked about the use of the logo, the corporate logo and the difference between the corporate logo and then the designated product. Because um, like you said, like you clarified, the ally was emphasizing the use of logo for designated products. But um, the images you showed were actually um, brand branding, corporate branding. And that's the clarity I actually wanted to seek. Then my second point is, um, yes, when it comes to infant feeding, especially from zero to six months, exclusive breastfeeding is the ultimate. Nothing can ever compare to breast milk. And so everyone who can assist a healthcare, um, a mother who can assist a mother to breastfeed must do so. I just wanted to clarify that a lot of the time, um, even from my interactions with people, they uh, Fred, I cannot. I don't know whether I'm the only one, but we can. I can hear you clearly. Um, is it better now? It's clear. I can hear. Okay, um, Madam Fosti, is it better now, please? Um, Dede, please. Can I go on? Yes. Kindly do I think, I think we've lost. Just okay. Okay. So what I just wanted to yes, what I just wanted to um clarify, stroke emphasize was the fact that a lot of time we interchange the use of promotes and then recommendations, and and unfortunately there are quite a number of people who get confused about it. Because if a, a dietitian, a nutritionist should assist a mother to um, identify the right infant formula to use because her baby needs it, that is recommendation. That is not promotion. And if you look at the LI, it gives the definitions for what promotions entail. It's a long list of uh, definitions of promotions and it includes um, marketing activities such as tying sales, price reduction, and all that. And so um, I just wanted to state that clarification um, based on some of the comments anti first made. And then finally, when it comes to activities involving the sharing of scientific information, um, somebody asked whether 
uh, the onus lies on the health worker or the manufacturer. If you look at the LI, you read um, every single article, it, it does not specify whether it is the health worker or the infant formula manufacturing company that should go for the, um, the approval. You know, the import is the healthcare professional should have an approval. And um, that is something that is usually adhered to most of the time. So these are the clarifications I wanted to um, add. Thank you very much. Okay, so Fred, I don't know, maybe it's my internet. I lost most of what you said. But what I heard is the first one talking about the logo uh, on the, the brand, it being the brand yes, of please. the company, yeah. but no. So I will take that. The rest, honestly, okay. I didn't hear my internet keeps coming. So let me take this before. Now with that, if you look at the brand name of the company, it's always in the designated product. It's associated with the designated product. So it could influence... Unfortunately, that's not the case. I'm so sorry I had to interject, but you see, um, when it comes to corporations, there is a very clear, distinct difference between corporate branding and then product branding. The reason being that yes. the corporate is an entity. If you look at it legally, the corporate entity can be sued and can sue. When it comes to the brand entity okay. portfolios, they actually change and they are varied. So if you see um, a okay, particular so corporate me, institution you know, can you that please... produces different products, you see that the logos are usually very, very distinct. Right. And that's the clarification on the two. Hello, okay, Fred. Hello, Fred. Just one second. Hello, Hello, Fred. Yeah, let me finish. Hello, yes. Fred. I, th I think as an individual, okay. we've had this discussion before. Us. Uh, answer. Yes, let me, let me, as individually, we've had these discussions before. You as a worker of Nestle and myself as a worker of Ghana Health Service. So it's not new to me you're asking these questions. So let me just take it again. What I'm saying is that if you take in our instance, what we have in our market, so it could be company A producing a designated product. And in that company A has a logo. And when you, in the product, you have the logo in the designated product. Okay, so now if they should brand something that is in the designated product, indirectly, you are advertising the designated product. That is how we see it to protect. So you see that we know that companies all over globally, it could not be only your company, have identified some of these loopholes. And these are some of the things I'm seeing that uh, experts have worked on and we are clearly seeing there should be amendments to the law. So I'm really sorry. Uh, these are the loopholes to the law that you are asking. I may not be able to understand this work in progress that we are working on. I understand your point of view, uh, you coming from the manufacturer point of view. I really, and it is not just that. I know that there are loopholes to the law, which I clearly stated. Okay. So um, let, let's not discuss the loophole because I've already stated that, that the loophole to the law. And the experts in this country and lawmakers in this country have sat down and have made some amendments, all bodies that are interested in infant and young child And we are hoping that it's still work in progress. And us here as professionals are also mandated to push so that we get the truth. So if it has to do with any of the loopholes, Fred, I would kindly say that uh, it's still work in progress and I may not have answers for you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, Fred, are you okay um, with the explanation? Because someone was trying to, um, mm -hmm. I think um, Yao, to help you in the chat, says that perhaps please more specific examples of designated products and company brands. But if no, you are okay like, uh, with the... Um, mm, no, like um, Auntie Fosti rightly said, this is a discussion that uh, we can always have because um, it's quite oh. subjective in the interpretation. However, if you look at the spirit okay. and letter of the LI, you see that um, every provision has been very intentional. Okay, that is why it kept um, it for as an appendix to almost all the articles, it emphasizes designated product. And then when you go down to the definitions, it defines what qualifies to be a designated product 
just so as not to, uh, you know, to prevent ambiguity. And I just no, wanted I'm, to give an example so of that. I'm, where, trying, yeah. I'm trying to connect to a different network. Uh, okay. It's really, really unstable. I'm really sorry about that. But Fred, I hope you heard my submission. I'm saying yes. that if it has to do with the loopholes of the law, no, it's something that is quite in progress. And I don't think we have much time to be able to um, speak to that. So if it has to do with that, it, I think yeah. we can. You know, you and I know very yeah. well. Yes, thank you. In fact, I agree with I, I agree with that. Thank you. <laughs> I think the discussion would take more than just this um period for our CP. So um thank you, thank you, Fred. Um and so in the spirit of our CPD, um I will I, I don't see any hands um up, so I can call an end to this uh, very fruitful and interactive and um, a shared learning platform, CPD. Firstly, once again, as you can see, I want to thank you so much, so, so much. Thank you for bringing your expertise to bear. And um, we've learned so much. This has been a highly educated session. And we are very grateful for your time to be with us today and then teach us more uh, the do's and don'ts when it comes to um, infants, formulas, and then breast milk substitute. So, um, thank you so much. And someone even agrees with me and um, said it's a splendid presentation by team. So I, I hold, wholeheartedly agree with that as well. Thank you so, so much. I would okay, ask so the day I'm back. Sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> So, so you didn't hear all my thanks. No, Welcome, no, Atikos. no, thank you. You went off. I went off. Oh, okay. Let, let me, okay, so let me do the thank you again. I, I was thanking oh, you for your time and peace in teaching us more about uh, today's topic. We are very grateful and um, coming and um, spearheading this CPD presentation. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The pleasure is mine. Thank you. And um, I would ask our executives if they have any feedback, any announcements for us. So whilst I'm waiting for them, I want to thank every attendee um, today as well. Um, thank you so much for your patience and your time to spend with us for this CPD program. We are grateful to have you. Kindly enjoy the rest of your day. So, our dear friends, if you are still on the call, please, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, RN, uh, Faustina. This is Fausti. Oh, okay, let me use Fausti for short. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you, Dede. It's been a great moderation. And I think this has been very insightful uh, for us as professionals, uh, as uh, our code of ethics will say, uh, we need to do all that we can to protect our patient. So every information required to help us do that is very, very uh, key to our practice, right? So um, I think that all that we have studied and, and the help, the discussion that has gone on, will shape our minds and thoughts concerning what we require or what we need to help our people, right? Okay, so um, I just have a few announcements to give. Uh, we have to, those of you who haven't filled your, your attendance from kindly fill, and also those who didn't pay, who haven't paid for your CPDs, uh, even when you fill the form, it doesn't count when we are sending the list to Allied Health Council, your name will not be part. So if you did not pay your yearly subscription, it will mean that you would have to pay uh, for all the individual CPD before uh, we can send a supplementary list to uh, I, uh, AHPC uh, for it to be credited to your CPD account. So please, let's take note. So we, we always have two lists, the master list of attendance and the list that actually goes to the CPD. And that is the list uh, the, that goes to AHPC. 
that is the list that uh, uh, we are we tease out of the of the master list using the the list of all those who have paid uh, for CPD this year, or those who paid for that particular CPD. So please let's take note. Okay. Um, I'm reminding you of our account, our our nutrition and dietetic Christmas or uh, eat coming off in October. The registration is underway. I think that, and I know that all our uh, communications are on the various platforms, our WhatsApp platforms, uh, the various caucus platforms, and on our Telegram as well. Please, if you have not read the current communication yet, kindly read it and know the timelines for registration. I think the early bird registration is still on. Kindly do so and make sure you register at a lower cost. Um, thank you so much. It's been great having all of you. Once again, thank you, Adi Dede, for, for that excellent uh, uh, moderation. So uh, when we sign out, we will have to, I'll wait for about five minutes for those who haven't filled the form to fill. Then we will end the call. Adi Dede, can you give us a closing prayer? Sure. Um, please, let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for this time of shared learning and empowerment. Much for being with us from the beginning all the way to the end of the program. We thank you that the program has been because you've been with us right from the beginning. We thank you for the strength you gave to our presenter to do justice to the topic. And we thank you for her life and then we know that a multiple harvest of grace is directed to her. Yeah. We thank you for every participant on the call. More grace to do what we do best, more ability. And then the knowledge that we obtain today, we'll use it wisely in all our ideas. We give you all praise and adoration in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank Amen. you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. A that was good great. day. Yes, Prince. That, that was great. Thank you. That was great. Thank I've you. learned Thank a lot. You. And it's I've a taken privilege. a lot of bread. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. some of the parts of the laws we have even forgotten. Mm -hmm. So it's a very great reminder. Yes, Maybe we may have to do this once every year. Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. I'm always at your service. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Bye. I'll call you. Thank you, everyone. Non, 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 non
Shine. 